Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi. Uh, here we are with a nice tricky question on Young's double slit experiment for JE aspirants and physics Olympiad enthusiasts. Uh, this is a question that I would like you people to actually give it a try, right? Uh, just pause the video at this particular place, give it a proper try. Uh, the reason being I have seen many students get it actually wrong in the first attempt. Okay, so um, once you are done and then only please go ahead with the solution of the question that I'm going to present. Okay, right. So let me go ahead with the formal wording of the question. A modified Young's double slit experiment is set up and arranged as shown. A point source, green source of light right, is placed such that SS1 minus SS2. So it's not placed symmetrically, right? A symmetric placement was done so that SS1 looks longer than SS2 by a value of lambda by four, where lambda is the wavelength of the green light that is used. S1 and S2 are narrow slits separated by a distance D. So the uh, distance between the two slits is the usual symbol that we use as small d. The distance of point source and the screen is same and capital D is equal to one meter res respectively from the plane of slits. So what he's trying to tell you is that this distance from the source to the slits is capital D and also from the slits to the screen is also capital D. So he's talking about the distances being the same and one meter each. What are the values of theta? The theta is measured for, from this particular line for which maxima is obtained. Okay, so it's one or more than ans one answer may be right. And the usual conditions of the YDSC that the surrounding air is homogeneous and capital D, which is the distance between the screen and slits. And here also this distance is very large compared to small d. And in turn, that is very large compared to the wavelength, which is a very important uh, condition required for the YDSC fringes to form. So the options given, as you could see on the screen, right, so I, I already told you that you're supposed to pause and uh, try it, uh, the, try the question once, right? So we'll go ahead with the solution. And before I start the solution, um, this particular concept requires your proper understanding of the path difference or the famous formula of D sine theta. So just in case you are unaware or doubtful about your formula, especially for those students who would have got this answer wrong, I recommend that you go into the description and find a link for the concept that was explained in another video already. Okay, so once you're done with that, please do come up, come back and look at the solution. So here we go. So what I've done is I've pre-drawn the particular points there, right? So you could see the entire diagram is drawn on the right. This is the entire diagram. I hope you are able to visualize, right? So the right side, please look at the screen, right side. So this source, which is the green colored light, sends light with a path difference, as you could see that it's a asymmetric placement, right? And from slits S1 and S2, again, the light will uh, um, encounter some path difference before it interferes at a general point P on the screen, okay? Now, the white dotted line that I have drawn in this diagram is the bisector line, right, which is very important. And, but the angle that was the trap in the question, the angle that was asked in the actual question was the angle with the red line and not the white dotted line. Okay, so you should be very, very careful. So I marked some distances of that point P where maxima is to be found out. Uh, one value of the distance I marked is from the uh, white dotted line that I call it as Y2. And another distance that I marked this between the red line on which the source was kept and that white dotted line as Y1. So I'll try to eliminate these numbers as I move along. So the same Y1 I borrowed here. So what I will try to uh, understand here is for calculating the path difference, I, I can't just say path difference occurs on this side, but also this side. So I'll divide this path difference calculation into two parts. One is the left side calculation, another one is the right side calculation. So I've labeled the right side as the side of the screen and the left side as the side of the source. So let's move on to the left side calculation. Okay, so let me move to the left side calculation. In the left side calculation, you could see the path difference was already mentioned as lambda by four, but you can also write that path difference as small d sine theta or theta or alpha. Alpha is one way that you can, but what is alpha? If you have already understood the concept of the path difference formula, you should know that the path difference is always measured with an angle to the midpoint of S1 and S2. Okay, so if this is the midpoint, that point has been marked here as you could see, and I drawed, drew a line 
to that particular place. So that angle alpha is the uh, value that I should take in the formula of D sine alpha, which is already mentioned to you as lambda by four in the question. So D sine alpha is lambda by four is what the left side gives. And in this small angle, the value of alpha should be y1 by d1. So that's what I have written at this particular place. So d into y1 by d1 should be lambda by 4 is the first equation that I get from the left side of the diagram. Once I move to the right side, which is even more interesting. Okay, right. In the right side, what is the path difference that I end up getting uh, only on the right side? I think, again, I can use d sine theta, right? And d sine theta, which theta? I don't think this is the theta that I should look at. I should have drawn, it would have made my diagram clumsy, but you are all good enough to visualize now. Imagine I were to draw a line joining this point, which is the midpoint of slits to that point, that would have made some line, right? That would have made some angle with this dotted line, right? So that angle is the D sine beta maybe I can think of. Instead of writing that, can I write that sine of that angle is nothing but Y2 divided by D2. And that's what I wrote here. Okay, right. Small d times of y2 divided by d2 would have been the path difference on the right side. So that's what I implied. So total path difference, how much would that be? The path difference that I got, the path difference that I got on this side minus path difference that I got on this side. Remember the path difference on this side is because S2 is traveling more. Whereas the path difference on this side is because this line is traveling more. So total path difference should be subtraction. So that's what I subtracted. If this total path difference of the wave starting from S reaching this point P is N lambda, then I would be assured of a maximum on screen. So that's what it culminated into. Okay, so I rearranged it and I ended up having D into Y2 by D is equal to N plus one by four into Lambda. Okay, so these, these are the two things. Then what is theta? Theta is, as you could see in this situation, Y2 plus Y1 divided by D2. Remember that theta was measured with some offline, not the symmetry line. So that's care that you have to take. That's the trap in the question. So that Y1 plus Y2 divided by D2, Right, so I already got y1 from the first equation. Can you see that here? And y2 from the second equation, I'll just nicely substitute them into this value and I end up getting, so d1 and d2, I have drawn a general form here, which was in the question given as uh, equal to each other. So I end up getting this as the requirement. So you can put n equal to zero, n equal to one, so on and so forth, and start forming the options there. So for zero, you would get lambda by 2d, right as the angle or sine inverse of that you could mention and for one you'll end up getting three lambda by 2d right and five lambda by 2d so on and so forth so you would have a situation of uh, options being b and c as the correct answers right so thanks for watching just in case some of you have watched this video without going through the concept of d sine theta video that i have already made so please make sure you go to that video link is in the description and then come back and try to see the solution again i think you will be able to understand it and not forget it in the future problems also okay right thanks for watching and see you in another video